Now let's take a look at what's changed with motion and compressor, which, as usual, is not nearly as much as with Final Cut, but still some interesting new details. Next to motion, also getting the same comic look filters, as well as the tiny planet mapping option for VR material, it's finally gotten the same color correction filters and tools as Final Cut Pro. A very welcome addition. Meaning I can now correct my footage in motion using the exact same color curves, color wheels, hue and saturation curves, and even custom LUT filters as in Final Cut Pro. Whereby that's not only functionally a superb improvement, but it also opens up some really nice possibilities for third parties or even yourself for creating filters to use in Final Cut Pro. So it should be interesting if and what comes down the pipeline in the near future. Unfortunately though, no scopes. Which is a bummer, but there are always future updates to look forward to. Lastly, on the subject of motion, something I'm sure a lot of foreign language users are going to really appreciate. Namely, in my opinion, long overdue improvements to the core text engine. These improvements now ensure the accurate display of Arabic letters, Indic vowel signs in Devanagari, and Thai diacritics. And in addition to that, it also allows for rendering and animation of emojis, which oddly didn't actually work up until now. Thin glyphs, capital letters in various point sizes, and vertical text are now apparently also joined and tracked correctly. So if any of that was something you've needed in the past, that too is now history. All of which of course applies to Final Cut as well. And lastly, Compressor 2 has of course gotten a few new additions and improvements. First and foremost, it is now finally 64-bit. I bet you didn't even know it was 32 up until now, huh? Meaning it can now take advantage of all the memory in your Mac to support even higher resolution images and projects. Compressor can now also view, edit, and deliver closed captions in the SRT format as well, and now also uses source media properties to automatically configure MXF and QuickTime settings, if that is something that is in fact relevant to your workflow. Well, that's it from my end. What did you think? Have a favorite feature or maybe find something you think I should have mentioned and forgot, or maybe I didn't see it, I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. Join me on Facebook and Twitter and all the rest. Links and infos are in the description. And again, if you liked it, and if it maybe even helped you find something, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified when my video on Frame.io's extension, for example, goes up, then subscribe, hit the little bell, and you'll be notified as soon as I upload anything. But either way, thanks a lot for watching, and maybe see you in the next one. Bye.